Yay, pink dogs. Yay, fun. What's going on, everybody? Today I'm going to bring you a quick video with an update to my Whiskers Stamina Nightblade Ganker build for the Deadlands DLC. There's been a couple of changes that I've made since moving to the live server. I've swapped out one of the gear sets as well as just you know, made a couple of tweaks here and there to make the build as strong as possible. Let's quickly look at the buffed stats. All right, keep in mind that we'll have more weapon damage with continuous attack, but we've actually stacked a little bit more into penetration. So our max mag, 18K, max health, 22K, really low, it's ganker, it doesn't matter. Um, max stam, 28K. Our recoveries, magic recoveries, 1k, and our stam recovery is actually at 15, 1500, which is not too bad. Our weapon damage is at 6000. With continuous attack, we'll have like 6300, so that's pretty good. Um, our weapon critical, 40%. And then our physical penetration should be about 20k with the surprise attack. All right, let's quickly take a look at the gear changes. We've added a mythic. We needed wild hunt, we needed the speed. I was just struggling. I felt like I was stuck in the mud all the time. So we added Wild Hunt to the build. This is Swift. I've got a Stamina, re stamina Recovery enchantment on this. You can go, if you don't need the extra Stam Recovery, you can go Infused Weapon Damage for even more damage. We've still got the Calorian's Legacy Necklace and Ring, but we've now put Calorian's Legacy on the belt. So we've got the Calorian's Legacy Weapon, two Jewelry, and a belt to make the five piece. The other thing that we've changed is we've added Stygian instead of New Moon. So the proc conditions for Stygian is when you leave Sneak or Invisibility while in combat, your weapon and spell damage is increased by 356 for 15 seconds. So originally I had thought that, well, you need to be in combat because that's what it says, but you actually don't. So if, you, if you're if you not in combat and you come up behind somebody with Stygian on and you hit them with a heavy attack in cap, it counts as being in combat. So it actually procs the Stygian. So I don't know if they're going to patch that in the future, but for now, we've replaced the New Moon with the Stygian. Gives us a little bit more damage, not a lot more damage, but we have quite a bit more sustain now. So for Stygian, I've got Stygian chest, Stygian boots, Stygian legs, Stygian hands, and then Stygian shoulders. All divines, make sure they're all divines, with st max stam enchantments. And then we've also swapped the monster set. We were wearing a two-piece Balorgs before, but now we're just wearing a one-piece Krag. If you already went and got your Balorgs, you can just keep a one-piece Balorgs. That's fine. Uh, back bar, we're still using Critical Repost. Uh, no changes there. Um, for the enchantment on the weapon, we're using a Shock Damage Glyph. On the back bar, we're using poisons. I also have a weapon damage enchant here in case the poisons run out, but I prefer poisons because it helps us knock people off mounts or whatever. If they're trying to run away, we can just hit them with a, with a double dot poison and knock them off their mount. All right, for the skills, nothing's really changed for the skills. We're using surprise attack, executioner, rally, camouflage hunter, relentless focus, and then our primary ultimate is in cap strike. On the back bar, we've got Shadowy Disguise, Shadow Image, Resolving Vigor, Channeled Acceleration, Leeching Strikes, and Undo. Here you can run the Bow Ult or you can run Soul Tether. Undo is my preferred because we get minor protection from just having it slotted and we also get the bubble when we're blocking. Some important things to note, make sure you're a Vampire. Stage two, we're using the Lover Mundestone. We're using Bewitched Sugar Skulls. The reason that we're a Vampire Stage 2 is because we're looking for the Strike from the Shadows passive and the Unnatural Movement passive. So when you're at Stage 2, when you leave Sneaker Invisibility, you gain an additional 300 weapon damage. For race, we're a Khajiit. This just gives us a little bit of extra critical damage when our procs do crit. I prefer Khajiit. But we can go with Wood Elf, we can go with Orc. Orc is fine, gives us extra sprint speed. Uh, Wood Elf gives us extra just movement speed in general, so Wood Elf is great. We'll also give you a little bit extra sustain, so on the jewelry you can just run where we had that stamina recovery enchant, you can just run a, a weapon damage enchant there if you're a Wood Elf. Let's quickly look at the champion points. I don't think anything has really changed from the champion points. Uh, we're just using Gifted Rider, War Mount, and Sustaining Shadows, this one's important. Uh, for the blue tree, we've got Backstabber, 
Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, Untamed Aggression. For the Red Tree, we're using Celerity, Relentlessness, Rejuvenation, and Sustained by Suffering. We don't really need any sort of defense um, from the Fitness Tree, so we're just getting as much sustain as we can out of there. I think that about wraps it up. I'm going to update the build on my website, so there'll be a link down in the description for if you're interested in a written guide. Also join the Discord. We've been doing some pretty cool things with our live streams where we've added a bounty system. So while we're playing, we can put bounties on other players in Cyrodiil, and then if you guys go out and you get the kill, and then you get a screenshot of the kill, you can just paste it in the Discord, and then I will pay you for the bounty, depending on how much of a bounty I put on that person's head. So it's pretty fun. Join the Discord, you can kind of check that out. There's a lot of cool content creators in there too. We've got at least 10 to 15 various ESO content creators. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.